That's why we need to surrender to Jesus because he can touch us in places that no person can touch us. You know, there's many ways that people seek help nowadays. They may go to counselors, psychiatrists. I'm not knocking the medical field, but I would tend to say after all my years of being around the ministry, I've seen the Lord touch people in places where a doctor couldn't touch, where in no medicine could touch. And that is one of the benefits of us being and belonging to Jesus Christ. But you know, we have to, we should be able to surrender to Jesus for deliverance for his work in our lives we can be around a deliverance ministry and never get deliverance that's because it's not by the move of humanity it's by the move of jesus you know a lot of times because we are human beings and we look to people we look at people like for instance you guys are looking at me preach today but I want I would request that you see Jesus because he is the one that can do something for you in your life. Pastor Dennis can just be the arm and the hands of the Lord, but it's not Pastor Dennis is doing it. It's not any human that's doing it. If we can just see Jesus doing it, then we can receive his ministry. It's not about our favorite. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. So if we surrender to Jesus, we will see his move because Jesus, the Bible shows that Jesus moved in the deliverance ministry and the healing ministry and the restoration ministry and all the ministry that we as his body are supposed to move in. You know, there are ministers sitting uh, in front of me, there are people that God is calling to move in certain areas, but we just have to pray what our place is in the body of Christ. Amen. Because there's too much work to do for us not to realize what our calling is in Christ Jesus. So when we surrender to Jesus Christ for deliverance, and I contend that the minister needs ministry. Even the minister needs ministry. The person that stands and preaches the gospel and teaches the gospel isn't exempt from getting ministry. Because why? Because we are human beings. And I say ministry with a little m evangelist with a little e pastor with a little p because jesus i like to call it and i hope i'm not offending anybody jesus is the big cheese amen and if we can just look at ourselves as humble and as broken and not it's not that we're weak when we get deliverance you're not weak you're not in any exposure of sin, we expose our sin to God. If we have a sin, we expose it to God. And God, the Bible says, some men's sins follow them, and some men's sins go before them, and some men's sins follow them. It's better to have your sins confess while you're on this earth than to have them follow you over into glory so when we have the blood of jesus and we have the power of god that the bible has given us we as human beings will not have any excuse when we stand before jesus christ because he said go out into the world and make disciples he said heal the sick raise the dead cast out devils preach 
because freely you have received freely give it is a big work it's not a small work for one or two human beings to do it is a work for we are the body of christ so we have to find our place in the body of christ in luke 9 37 through 42 um, these are some scriptures where we can see where jesus did deliverance while he was on this earth and I have seen since I've been in the ministry some of the manifestations that Jesus saw because of his name because of the name of Jesus the Bible says the devils know and they tremble in Luke 9 37 through 42 the devil threw him down and tear him and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child. In Matthew 4, 23 to 24, they were tormented, possessed with devils and lunatic, and he healed them all. Since I've been a Christian over the past years, I've seen Christians get hung up on that, that possessed, oppressed, obsessed thing. But I contend that if the devil has any power over you at all, it doesn't matter if you're possessed, oppressed, or obsessed, or depressed, if he's got power over you. Whether he's inside of you doing his work, or he's outside of you doing his work. If you're a sitting duck for him to just do what he pleases, then he has power over you. If we speak to him, if we learn the power of words, of power words in the Bible, and we speak to him and train our spirit man, we have to train our spirit man to speak those words so it can be strong enough to be able to stand when our body, physical body, is weak, then we will be able to walk in that freedom that Jesus Christ gives us. But as long as we're in this human body, we need to contend with the enemy. We will have to contend with the enemy. That doesn't mean that we walk around and look for the devil behind every rock or look for the devil in everybody's eyes or see a necklace they're wearing and stare at the necklace or just make the devil's power more than it is. We must learn as Christians to see Jesus in people when we can see Jesus in people then we can see where Jesus is with that person and then because once Jesus is inside of the person he can begin to work with that person he can begin to bring them where he wants them to be and that's our job as Christians that were once in the world and God bought us and transformed us and made us to what we are now sometimes we can forget about what we went through we can forget about the times that we fail you know nowadays you see ministers falling you see ministers falling out of the pulpit you see ministers falling flat on their faces but you know what it's not a point to say that all Christians are hypocrites. It's not a point to say that those Christians that fell from the Lord didn't, that fell from their positions in Christ publicly, did not love the Lord with all their hearts. They may have just had a moment of temptation like David did, and he fell for that temptation. But the Bible says in first Kings, you can look it up. I think it's first Kings 15. He's the Bible says David loved the Lord, except in the case of Uriah, the hit, the Hittite. He loved the Lord out of all his 70 years or however long he lived. The Bible had one except it said except for Uriah, the Hittite. So do we cancel out that David's whole ministry? Do we cancel out all of what David did because he fell that one time with Uriah, the, uh, with uh, Bathsheba? 
You see, God has more mercy than that. Yes, David did have to pay. He, the Bible said the curse did not leave his house. And but he walked in a bit of deception to the prophet Nathan came and opened his eyes. But David wrote beautiful psalms and then in psalm 51 and in also psalm 32 i believe we see that david was pouring out his heart before the lord and he had a contrite spirit a spirit of con contrition he had a repentant spirit he knew when he was wrong how many of us don't know when we're wrong how many of us will never admit when we're wrong. You see, sometimes the shoe has to be on this foot and not on the other. Sometimes the shoe is on the other foot and on this foot. But we have to see, I have to see my part and where God wants me to be in my walk with him. Then I will be able to have more compassion. I will be able to not judge so harshly. I will be able to take a beam out of my own eye. In Acts 10 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. There are many sitting on pews that are oppressed of the devil. There are many uh, even in the pulpits, even teaching that are oppressed of the devil. But you see, we have to get our intellect out of the way or our doctrinal teaching out of the way. And because Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and he will teach us all things. He said he would bring all things to our remembrance. And so we as a Christian, we have to learn how to walk in accordance with what the Holy Spirit, who is the author written by the hands of man of this word. We have to know what the Bible says. And in order to know what the Bible says, sometimes we just got to get in and just read it and also break scriptures down and study them. My pastor used to recommend the concordance. But I say when you look at a concordance or a commentary, you have to be very careful because the commentaries were broken down just like the Bible was broken down. And we have to make sure that we are not losing the interpretation of the scripture. So it's good if you're going to be a Christian, I contend don't read a lot of other books. Don't read all the most popular books because you don't know the spirit of that person. And if you're a baby Christian, you've just been a Christian for a decade or five or ten years and you are not a student of the Bible. That's how people fall into confusion. That's how people get on the wrong tracks. Just because the book is full of scriptures doesn't mean that it is scriptural or that it is of the Lord. Because the Bible says that's how some people are going to fall away. The Bible says that's how some people are going to give heed. Christians are going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And if, you, if I don't know the doctrine of the Bible or the doctrine of the word of God and I'm reading a whole lot of books, I might be filling myself with doctrine, subtle lies that the enemy is telling me and I'm taking into my what? My spirit and my soul and my soul is being ravaged by lies, then I'm in trouble as a Christian. If I don't have any kind of sound biblical teaching, not any pastor on this earth, not any person that is a minister in the body of Christ knows every nook and cranny of the word of God. We only know what we've studied. We only know what the spirit of God has revealed to us. The things of God come through the spirit of God. That's why we must 
be careful of who we put ourselves under. That's why we must be careful of what we just sit and sit in front of the goats and let the goat ministers to us. I There's a term, and I may preach on it one day, called the Judas goat. And the Judas goat is just like you've heard the term Judas. He betrayed Jesus. The goat come, the goats, the Judas goat's job is to come to be familiar with the people and get the people, get the sheep used to following him. A Judas goat, if you look at them, they almost look like a sheep. But their particular job is to lead the sheep to the slaughter. So what the Judas goat does when it's time for the sheep to be slaughtered, the Judas goat starts the, the sheep to following him up into the slaughtering, the place of slaughter. And the sheep are very close together, so they can't get away. But at the top, just before the sheep go to slaughter, there is a little side gate for the Judas goat to es escape. But the sheep are too close together to escape, so they fall to their slaughter. And you see, if you look at that in the spirit, not every person that stands behind a pulpit is a shepherd of the sheep. Some of them are Judas goats. They are spiritually leading the, the sheep to their slaughter spiritually. That's why some will give heed to seducing spirits. The Bible calls them false prophets and doctrines of devils. But there are goats in the house of the Lord and there are sheep. There are goats and there are sheep. Let me get back to my teaching. Matthew 8, 16 to 17 says, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So the whole point of the gospel was to do the work that Jesus Christ did on this earth. That's why he commissioned his disciples. He said, preach, heal, and cast out devils. He, commis he commissioned them, commissioned them. And not once did he call one of them a hypocrite. He called the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees hypocrites, but he didn't call his disciples. Not once you can find in the word of God where Jesus looked at his disciples and called them a hypocrite. They made mistakes. Look at Peter. But not once did Jesus call. He just said that the, the Satan desires to sift him like wheat, but he didn't call him a hypocrite. Not all Christians are hypocrites. Okay. I don't believe David was a hypocrite. I believe he had a moment of weakness, but he wasn't a hypocrite. A hypocrite is a state of way a person lives their life. Are they sorry for what they did? Uh, do they look to Jesus Christ? That's a whole nother teaching but demons can influence christians they can influence christians i've seen it too much with my own eyes how a christian is can be under demo demonic oppression especially when you put pressure on the spirits especially when you use the word of god those spirits know and they have to obey However, the Christian has a part in it. That's why the ministry of deliverance can be glorified. The ministry, there's no part of the ministry of Jesus Christ that's above any of the other parts. The ministry of deliverance shouldn't be put on a pinnacle and be worshipped.
Like that's the only thing there is to do. You see, deliverance is a very dangerous tool if it's in the wrong hands. Because what happens is when a person gets deliverance, that person that's receiving deliverance has to walk that deliverance out. And if they're not repentant in their heart, if they're not truly sorry for what they've done and seeking God, God knows a spirit can't just go in and out at will as we may think. Okay. A person, when they get deliverance, must be able to have a closer walk with Jesus Christ. If it's not that minister's job to see that that happens. Yes, a minister can teach the word of God, but it, a minister is not a micromanager. A minister isn't somebody that's always looking over a person's life. You see, the people, Jesus didn't run out looking and say, do you need ministry? Do you need ministry? Do you need ministry? Do you need ministry? Jesus didn't do that. The Bible says they came to Jesus. And that's throughout our whole Christian walk. If we sit and we need ministry, we have to go to Jesus for ministry. And a pastor is God's representative on this earth. So at some point, it's, if you're with a humble heart and you're with a repentant heart coming to a pastor for ministry, but you're afraid that pastor might tell your business. You got to give God a chance. You got to give God a chance. You've got to come and open up and let the Lord minister to you. Let the Lord minister to you. Pray about who you go to for ministry don't go because you're desperate don't just go to any minister because you're desperate go because God is sending you demons can influence Christians the Bible shows that believers part from the faith so if they part from the faith that means they were under or they are under the influence of demons in first timothy 4 1 and 2 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They are giving heed. It says they gave heed. They listened. They may have been deceived. But they were listening to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You see how dangerous spiritual things are. Just because we're in love with the minister, we always got to be looking and watching. We always have to have our spiritual eyes in tune to the spirit of God because humanity can fall. Humanity can take a turn to the wrong way. And God might be wanting to use you and raise you up as an intercessor or as a prayer warrior for the leaders of the church, for the ministers of the church. Don't stand by the wayside if God is giving you a call to pray for somebody that's in ministry because a minister or people that carry the word of God, that carry the gospel need prayer. Yes, we can pray our personal prayer. We can pray, a minister can pray for others. They can pray in the Holy Ghost. They can pray in the understanding. But you see, we can watch each other's back. The Roman soldiers, when they were in the ring, sometimes the Roman soldiers used to stand back to back so they know that their back is covered. They fight now here in front. But they know the back is covered. Sometimes 
especially if the minister isn't a full time minister, if the minister is just doing this ministry and but they're not a full time minister, they may not have the time to spend in the word or in prayer that they need to. They need somebody that may have a prayer ministry to minister in prayer and pray for them and pray for themselves and pray in the Holy Ghost. Y'all know that's my favorite form of prayer. But you know something? There's also false tongues <laughs> if you didn't know it. There's a false for anything that is real of God. Amen. Amen. Believers can receive another spirit. Second Corinthians 11, 3 and 4. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind shall be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That's a spiritual thing going on in there. Verse four. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So uh, there's a whole group of them that are under this spirit that we're talking about right here. Another Jesus, another gospel. And there may be following goats more than likely. They are following goat ministers and they need ministry in the spirit. They need seducing spirits cast out of them they need spirits of deception cast out of them they need spiritual blindness spiritual dullness and deafness of hearing cast out of them in order to be able to come back and be able to see with their spiritual eyes there are a lot of components that go along with the spiritual eyes not a lot. There are a couple of components. Is it a sincere heart towards the Lord, reading his word and doing what his word says? And one of the things that his word says to do is pray. But it also says to, to work while there's still light. And in a, a ministry involves uh, work. So we all need to know what our place is in the body of Christ, whether it's in answers to life or in any other ministry with any other ministry within the body of Christ. But we all have the same Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Galatians were bewitched by spirits in Galatians chapter three, verse one. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you? In Second Corinthians 2, 10 through 11, Satan can get advantage of the believer. Second Corinthians 2, 10 through 11, to whom Ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it. For your sakes forgave I in the person of Jesus Christ. Verse 11, this is important. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. He's talking to, Christ, to Christians. He's talking to the church of Corinth here. He says, lest Satan should get advantage of us. That means the devil can get an advantage of you if you're not walking in tune to the spirit of God. If you're not walking with a sincere heart towards the Lord. If the Lord knows who's sincere and who isn't sincere. We can't walk around saying, oh, all Christians are hypocrites. Because the Lord knows who is sincere and who is sincere. The Lord knows who will be in heaven when we only can judge with a beam in our eye who we think will be in heaven. We don't know who will be in heaven. Yeah, there are some despicable, despicable murderers 
that a lot of families have a lot of unforgiveness and a lot of bitterness. And I can't say what position I would be in if it happened to me and my family. But God is merciful. And the, the blood of Jesus can save the most despicable criminal. The most despicable. And that's where the real eyes of the Lord come into place. That's where the, the seeing with the eyes of the Lord come into play. Because if we look at how the world is looking at them, then we're going to get that judging spirit right up on us. When we should have a different heart. The Bible says that when we came to the Lord, we received a new heart. Amen. So God wants us to walk in victory and freedom in all areas of our lives. The fall of man made it impossible for us to achieve this on our own. We had to rely on the the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when Adam sinned, all spiritual communion was broken between God and man. But the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ, restored man's communion and relationship with God. In John 3, 16, but God so loved the world. Can you say it with me? That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I see some of y'all are Bible scripture memorizers. Amen. That's what I always um, recommend that you incorporate in your Bible study is scripture, is scripture memory. Scripture memory is a good practice. I've been doing it since I was a young believer, not on purpose. But what I used to do, and I tell some people, I used to just write scriptures out of the Bible. So if I'm writing quite naturally, I'm going to remember. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God wants us to walk in victory and freedom in all areas of our lives. There may be some dark area that's, that's hidden in our hearts that we haven't let God have yet. There may be something in our lives that we know and only we know. And if God can trust a minister enough to pray for the person rather than judge them, he will let the minister see a part, in part. We all only see in part. Like I told y'all before, I don't look or seek to see everything that's going on in somebody's life by the spirit. I don't do that. That's not my place. That's God's place. But if God, when I'm in prayer or something or in Bible study, if God reveals something to me in part, then he can trust me enough. The only reason he's revealing it to me is for me to pray. That's the only reason he's revealing it uh, to me. Not to stand up and give testimony that God showed me something about blankety blank. Because it's a trust issue. We trust God and he trusts us. You see, the things of the spirit are holy. They're not just to be handled with, with grubby hands of man. They are, be to handle, they are to be handled in a holy manner. And that's when God can trust you. If God can't trust you, He's not going to give you something that is sacred and holy. Our decision was the start of a new life, but also a new war with the kingdom of darkness. It's not for us to get caught up in the warfare, but it's for us to be aware. Daniel was made aware when he looked up in the heavenlies. And, and the angel came to him and said, when you prayed, God heard your prayer when you first prayed it. But the prince of Persia hindered the answer. But what was Daniel doing? He was seeking the Lord on a 21 day fast. 
21 days. And the Bible says he ate no pleasant thing for 21 days. So John 10, 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. Unfortunately, we have to contend with the enemy of our salvation. It's a must for a Christian that knows what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter six, one's place. But Christianity is an all about blessings and the loaves and the fishes because you see Jesus told them before his bread of life sermon which is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible he told the the seekers that saw him multiply the loaves and the fishes he turned to them and said you came because you saw you ate the loaves and the fishes and were filled. In other words, Jesus said, you here because of the blessings. You're not here to receive the true blessing, which is me, the word of life, the bread of life. Jesus is the one to be sought, not the blessings. It's seeking Jesus. And all these things shall be added unto you. So we have to contend with the enemy of our salvation. And when we make ungodly, sinful decisions, we can open a spiritual gateway to the demonic realm. Like I said, spirits don't just come and go as they please. They don't just come and go as they please. But we can't just play around with Christianity and think that, oh, I can just say I'm sorry for what I did and just keep on doing it. That's called an abuse of grace. That's one of those times we need to come to the, the pastor and get prayer. And sometimes deliverance is not the end, like I said earlier, deliverance is not the end all be all. Because it has to be walked out. We can't just get to sit there and get ministry. And then when we go and we have that temptation of whatever it is that we were tempted by, we go and do that without even any reservations, the Bible has an answer for that. It says it goes out seeking rest and finding none. So we must fill ourselves up with the word of God. It's a different level of Christianity. It is something that God wants to call each and every person in the body of Christ to do what he commissioned the disciples to do. That's what we are called to do. To do what he commissioned the disciples to do. It's a simple work. But there's so many distractions in life. The Bible says that we have three enemies. But before I go to that, I want to read um, a scripture concerning uh our ultimate choice and our ultimate choice is between me and Jesus. Every person sitting or listening to this recording has a choice to make. It is do we choose to do what we feel is right or what we think is right or how we've always done it or how we interpret it, or do we want to do it God's way? I can tell you it's going to be a fight to do it God's way, especially if I've been doing it my way all my life. It's going to be a fight. The sacrifice of Christ made provisions for us not to be slaves to sin and to live a life of freedom 
in Christ. In Romans 6, 1 through 2. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we sin, continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? But then the Bible says, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the father. First John 2, 1, my little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. I also read Ephesians chapter two, verses one through three. Amen. Praise the Lord. I do want to uh, go in uh, to a, a little bit of uh, deliverance here. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Um, as the Lord leads, but I do want to, you to know that God can forgive you for anything that you've ever done. Yeah. Don't miss the way of God by listening to the lie of the devil, putting guilt and shame, embarrassment, and all kind of stuff on you. Cause that's his specialty. The Bible says if we confess he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all righteousness. And before receiving deliverance, there are a couple things that we do. We repent and then we renounce. We repent and then we renounce. And what that means is repenting is asking forgiveness and changing your ways to not behave in that way anymore. In other words, Jesus said, bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. And God works with us in our own way and in our own time. Everybody's walk with the Lord is different. Everybody is different. That's why we have all of our fingerprints are different. God works with us in different ways. How he's working with me, it may not be how he works with you. He may work with you quicker than he works with me. But it's in accordance with the will of the person. So repenting is asking forgiveness and changing your ways to not behave in that way anymore to the best of your ability. God knows when we're trying, renouncing and or denouncing. Renouncing is stating that you no longer want to be associated with the sin. And then you're cutting all ties with the sin. Amen. That means if there's something that's physical that's causing you to sin, you might have to have a big bonfire. You might have to have a big bonfire to break. But I've seen over the course of my uh, Christianity where you set fire to something and it's hard for it to burn. What do you think that might be? So renouncing is stating that you no longer want to be associated. Lord, rep I repent of blankety blank and I renounce blankety blank in Jesus Jesus name so denouncing is public recognition that you know that the sin is wrong that's what denouncing is so let's let's uh let's say a, a, a prayer and some of the, some of the sins that that you can denounce or renounce or repent of are Say, for instance, fornication, theft, cheating, manipulating someone, lying, involvement with the occult, Satanism, witchcraft, violence, false religions. All these things you can renounce. Some of the things may have come down your family generational lines that are, are trying to enforce themselves on you, but others 
can be personal sins. Just because something's come down your family lines trying to enforce itself on you is not an excuse to walk in it. Because then it becomes a personal sin. It becomes personal rebellion. Amen. So I just want to lead everyone in a prayer. Then I'm going to do just some quick uh, deliverance real quick. Um, some mass deliverance. And those that uh, want to participate, sometimes you can breathe. Just breathe out, but don't keep breathing and hyperventilate. Breathe out. Or if you want to make it go, if something is 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 there, but it just wants to stay, you can cough. You can make it go. Sometimes you fight for your freedom. Sometimes you have to fight against the enemy. And it takes strength to fight, spiritual strength. That's why we have each other here. We can't look at anybody in judgment because of a deliverance situation and when we leave it's oh wow did you see the spirit that had wow i'm glad i don't have nothing like that when it could be lurking right down in your belly god loves us jesus loves us there's no doubt about it so if you would just uh Pray with me. Father, I humble myself at your feet. I thank you for dying for me and forgiving me of all my sins. I forgive everyone that has ever done anything wrong to me. I even forgive myself, Lord. I repent and renounce any sins that have been a part of my life, known or unknown. Now, I'm going to give you a minute to just think about things that might that you need to repent of. Lord, I ask you to forgive them, forgive me of them all. I repent of them. I completely renounce them all. Please break every chain associated with these sins and deliver me of all the spirits in Jesus' name. Lord, I close every open door to these sins in Jesus' name. Lord, if there's any sins I cannot remember, I confess them now and I ask you to reveal them to me. Please help me to rid my life of everything that is not of you. Lord, I renounce all sin and works of the flesh in my life now. Please help me and teach me to walk in the spirit. Let me be open to correction if I need it to continue to grow in Christ daily and die to self lord i also ask you to deliver me of all spirits passed down through the generational lines in jesus name i command all spirits i command all spirits to leave me now in jesus name help me to surrender my life to you from this day forward now I command these spirits to begin to leave right now. Everyone that was confessed, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. I take authority right now over every spirit of rebellion right now in the name of Jesus and rejection. I come against you right now in the name of Jesus. I break your power, your rule, your authority. Every spirit named and dumb name come out right now. Come out. By the authority of, of the name. Obey the name. Every hidden spirit. Come out. Every subtle, lying, seducing spirit. I command you to come out over the mind right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of the mind right now. In Jesus' name. Obey the name of Jesus. Come out of the mind. Weak wills. Come out. Lazy. 
unresponsive come out right now bondage spirits of bondage i command you to go right now and addictions come out all addictions take a deep breath and breathe them out take a deep breath and breathe them out you uh you can relax your mask if you need to come out in the name of jesus i break your rule and your authority in the name of jesus obey the name of jesus take a deep breath from the belly and cough it out cough it out now go 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 in the name of jesus roots of bitterness roots of unforgiveness come out right now in the name of jesus i break the powers of mental problems in the name of jesus all hereditary mental problems paranoia anxiety schizophrenia all dual personalities come out in the name of jesus i break your power come out insanity and nervous breakdown come out in the name of jesus the whole root of rebellion aggression and anger come out in the name of jesus you spirit of anger and sins of the tongue i command you to go in the name of jesus i command the cursed spirit to come out i command the blasphemous spirit to come out i command the lying spirit to come out by the authority of the name come out in the name of jesus every lying seduce, seducing witchcraft power i break your rule i break your power i break your authority in the name of jesus and the spirit of pride come out with it in the name of jesus you root of pride i lay the axe spiritual axe to the root of pride right now and i command that axe to begin to chop the tree down right now the whole root of pride the whole root of self the whole root of ruled by self come out in the name of jesus the blood the blood the blood of jesus the blood the blood of jesus the spirit of murder resentment hatred unforgiveness retaliation distrust of others suspicion fear of exposure fear of losing control fear of demon manifestation every root of fear in the name of jesus the whole gate keeper of fear over the mind i speak to you and i command you to bow your knee to the name of jesus right now in the name of jesus come out come out if you've ever been molested in your life you listen to this if you've ever been just your eyes closed everybody on their own deliverance if you've ever been molested in your life you have to forgive the one that did it in the name of jesus you have to forgive them so just in yourself forgive them just forgive them just let them go to the lord just let them go to the lord and receive what god has for you in the name of jesus remember is jesus standing in front of you delivering you he's there it's not about me it's about jesus standing in front of you and you submitting yourself to him in jesus name and i just and you just i'm gonna give you a minute to forgive him in the name of jesus that spirit that won't let him forgive in the name of jesus that spirit that's holding on i bind your power right now in the name of jesus in jesus name in jesus name and i want everybody to just take a deep breath and breathe it out so nobody will say oh they had the the, the spirit everybody you spirit of abuse come out sexual abuse right now in the name of jesus mental abuse and torment i break your power right now in the name of jesus breathe them out breathe them out breathe let them go come out i command you to let them go right now let them go let them go right now let them go in the name of jesus you will let go you will let go you will let go you will come out you will come out spirit of shame spirit of embarrassment come out in the name of jesus spirit of defeat spirit of perversities perverse sex perverse thoughts in the name of jesus seeing that person in your mind and hating them come out in the name of jesus i command that spirit out of the mind out of the mind out of the mind out of the mind 
out of the mind, out of the mind. You will let go of every part of the body. Your spirits of trauma come out, the trauma, not being able to come to who you really are in the name of Jesus. That split personality, I break the powers of that split personality down in the name of Jesus. The Bible says we are one in Christ Jesus, one spirit, one personality, one heart, one mind. I break the powers of duality right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you to come out. Come out. You rule the reign in the life too long. And for come out in the name of Jesus. All witchcraft, all Satanism. All things that are demonic that the people were subjected to in their family lines and in their to them personally. I break the powers of it in their family lines 10 generations forward and 10 generations back. The spirit of rape. I command you to come out. You spirit of rape. Come out. In the name of Jesus, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. You have to obey. You have to obey the name. You have to obey the name. Doubt and unbelief. Come out. Doubt and unbelief. All religious spirits, come out. Religious spirits, come out. In the name of Jesus. Mistrust, come out. In the name of Jesus. Unforgiveness, come out. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet real quick. Stand to your feet. Just lift your hands up to say, Lord, I give you my whole body and heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And I ask you to refresh me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Flood me from head to toe, Lord, and make every disobedient spirit accountable to the name of Jesus. Lord, help me from this day forward to pay attention to my spirit man, to my mind, to my body, soul, and spirit. Anoint me with your love, Lord. Anoint me with your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears. In Jesus' name, and help me to live for you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, if you don't have your prayer language, just ask the Lord to give it to you and begin to pray in your prayer language. All those that have their prayer language, just pray in the, in the spirit, in the name of Jesus. Loose the tongue right now and let it speak. Every spirit holding any tongue in here. I command you to let it go right now. I cut your power. I cut your rule. I cut your authority off of every tongue, off of every life, off of every walk. In the name of Jesus, you lying, deceiving, lying spirit. I bind you and silence your mouth and come out. In the name of Jesus, you're worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. You're worthy to be adored. You're worthy to receive all power, all might. All dominion, all authority in the name of Jesus and every name that is given in heaven and earth must bow its knee to the name of Jesus and every disobedient spirit. You are held accountable because you have been told to come out in the name of Jesus and you must obey the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. We praise you. We thank you. We praise you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. You're worthy to be praised in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Put your two hands together for Jesus. Amen. Lord, we loose the power of God over the people in the name of Jesus. We pray that you minister to them, Lord, by your spirit. Minister to them by your love in the name of Jesus. Lord, encourage them through your word in Jesus' name. Lord, let them feel your presence on their bodies, on their minds, their soul, and the spirit. You said you came to heal the broken heart and bind up the wounds. You said you came to bring joy in the morning, God. We loose the joy of the Lord over the congregation in the name of Jesus. We loose the peace of God. We loose the happiness of God. We loose the joy in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Lord, that every chain and every root of depression 
is bound and must bow its knee to the name of Jesus as we loose the joy of the Lord. And all the saints of God said, Amen. Amen. Put your two hands together for Jesus.